Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Lee. Most everybody calls me Dr. Jen. I'm a health and wellness coach and I specialize in helping people get through benzo withdrawal or BIND, benzodiazepine induced neurological dysfunction. I also help people who have anxiety who want to avoid going on psych meds and want to find a way to, to manage and overcome their anxiety naturally. Today's video is about a symptom that I think most everybody going through benzo withdrawal or buying experiences, but if you go and look at the published lists of possible symptoms, you might not find it on the list. And I realized yesterday, it's not on the list that's on my website either. And if you go to benzowithdrawalhelp.com under Benzo Basics, you'll see a page called Symptoms. And it lists all of the symptoms that have been reported anecdotally in the benzo community, or most of them, but it's missing this one. And I'm curious if you're in benzo withdrawal and you're watching this video, if you are already thinking about, well, what could that be? I know there are a couple of areas that we don't talk about. We rarely talk about our bathroom, uh, the GI issues, you know, pooping and peeing. We do some. People are embarrassed about that. People hardly ever talk about the impacts that benzo withdrawal or buying has on their sex life or their libido. But this topic, it's just, I just don't see it listed anywhere. So without further ado, let's dive right in and unpack what is that symptom that most of us experience that really isn't talked about as a symptom because it's not maybe perhaps a true symptom from the downregulated GAB receptors, but it is a byproduct of being in benzo withdrawal. It's the L word, loneliness. We feel, most of us, we feel lonely. And it makes sense that doctors don't know much about the damages and the dangers of benzodiazepines and the licensed psychologists and other healthcare workers, they're uneducated. And so we're lonely in that we don't have a medical system that knows how to work with us and help us. So that feels rather isolating. Our, fans, our <laughs> family and friends really don't understand benzo withdrawal. So we feel isolated and alone and misunderstood. And then because some of us are so debilitated by our withdrawal and bind symptoms that we are at home so much of the time and we, you know, some of us can't work, uh, too much visual stimulation or any type of, stim you know, sensory uh, overstimulation, we're not out in the world. So we find ourselves alone quite a bit. So if you put all of those factors together, we're kind of orphaned um, from, from the medical community. Our fam, you know, our family, I can say that word, our family and friends don't understand the syndrome. And then we can't work, we're really not out in society. It means we're pretty all on our own. And the loneliness can be intense for some of us. We lose friends. Um, people pull away. Even people that want to remain friends don't check in with us as often. Uh, compassion fatigue is a real thing. So people just get worn out emotionally, maybe physically too, from taking care of us. So we find ourselves on this journey often feeling very alone and lonely. It's not a good thing. It's one of the reasons that I started my support group, Heal with Dr. Jen, so that like-minded people could come together to focus on healing, not to come together and bitch and moan about everything, which is a normal thing to do. We're going through so much. It, it's a normal thing to do, but to sit there and stay in it day after day and that negative frame of mind doesn't help. So when people come together and they recognize one another's suffering, they recognize the struggle, they recognize the bravery, the courage, 
the persistence, you know, just the tenacity of another human being. It is so good for us. So it is good to reach out and to talk to other people who are going through it or people who have been through it who can keep reminding you, you are going to get through this because you really are. It is a season of suffering, no doubt, but we really do get to the other side. So I think it is time that we start a conversation in the Benzo community around loneliness. And how, how does loneliness manifest in your life right now? How are you coping with it? What are you doing? What are you putting in place so that you're not quite so lonely? And what are you doing to kind of help with the, the mental and the emotional part of loneliness? So I welcome your discussions in the comments below. I would love to hear how loneliness has impacted you and what you're doing about it. Because we don't heal in isolation. It's really important to remember that connection is a biological imperative, meaning it's not a nice to have, it's a have to have. We need people in our lives on some level. Yes, and I know some people uh, are at a stage of their recovery if they're really badly damaged that they just really can't tolerate being around people too often. I know there was a stage of my recovery when I had to tell my best friend, you can't even come into my house. Because anytime she stepped into my house, and I don't know what triggered it, just a wave of fear. I would have to just sit with this horrific terror. That's benzo withdrawal, right? Like who, I mean, who could even come up with a reason, a rationale why my best friend triggered this deep state of terror in me? But it, it, then that was what happened. So I know there is a time in our recovery when maybe it's difficult to be around people. And I'm not saying, I'm so not saying, go push yourself, sit with the fear. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that we don't heal in isolation. So please find people you can trust, that you can talk to, even if you've got to kind of titrate your uh, exposure, you know, little by little. But please, please don't wilt away in loneliness. Please find a way to deal with it in a healthy way. And if you need some help, let me know. Let me know. So I'm going to go put loneliness on my symptom chart that's on my website, even though it's, I don't know, I can't really say that downregulated GABA receptors cause loneliness, but having downregulated GABA receptors can set up our life so that loneliness then seeps in. So let's talk about it. And in the future, let's talk about those other two big things, uh, our bathroom habits and sex, because benzo withdrawal and buying affects both of those. All right, till next time, let's end as we always do first. You ready? Say it with me. I'll say it twice. I am safe. I am healing. I will recover. One more time. I am safe. I am healing. I will recover because all those things are true. Till next time.